afternoon. My name is Joseph Floyd and I source cars for people on a professional basis, hence the name of my channel, Lloyd Theory Consulting. Four years ago, I was asked to come up with a series of videos that were filmed inexpensively. We don't use digital cameras, we don't use fluid head tripods, we don't use shotgun microphones, we uh, wear tatty shirts, we just use a phone. But we look at cars that you can buy for a budget up to £1,000 only and we very much enjoy ourselves. These are cars that might be in cosmetically bad condition, you might see oil leaks, rattly dashboards and cosmetic imperfections, but uh, we go all over the country and we find these very inexpensive cars that you all seem to enjoy watching. Well, viewers, it's been a while, but here we have another Vauxhall Corsa B for no budget reviews. This one was within budget. It was actually bought at an auction. Um, I think one of the reasons why it was in budget is uh, this area just here. Um, we can see that it's had a bit of a, a life. But actually, it's not It's not too bad. Um, the only rust, I think, is that little sort of bit near the headlamp where the car's had an accident at some point in its past. So it's a 1998 uh, Corsa 1.4 Capital Automatic. I'd never heard of a Capital Special Edition of Corsa before. It might even be like a dealer one, I'm not really sure. It's probably based on an LS or something like that. We've only got windy windows, we've no got we've not got a driver's airbag. Um, we've got some sort of nice alloy wheels, it's probably like most of it and maybe the jazzy seat fabric. Got a nice sunroof which is good on a day like today. Since we're in April now, weather seems to have improved a bit. Corsa B's were just absolutely everywhere when I was uh, when I was younger. Just one of the most common cars you could get. They're starting to disappear now because you know they're not worth an awful lot of money um, in most forms. Maybe like a GSI or a Sport, probably a bit more expensive, or a CDX. But ones like this, not particularly. Mr. Young, who owns this car, um, has done a few thousand miles on it since he bought it about five weeks ago, and he has got another wing for it at the front, which is good. So you can see this being a facelift car, facelift occurred in about 1997. We've got different badging on the rear of this one. It doesn't give the engine size anymore, um, but it is a 1.4. I think the automatic gearbox is only available on a 1.4, possibly the 1.6, but I can't remember now. So original dealer plates from Allen's Vauxhall of um, Epsom. I used to live about half a mile from there. So plenty big enough for all the stuff that you need. Um, boot like probably needs a new battery or something, but compared with the the Nova that came before this, or the Corsa A, if you're in other parts of the world, this just sort of bigger boot. It just feels more solidly put together. Uh, it's not got quite the same styling. In fact, the styling is one of the best things about the car because when these came out in 1993, they were bang up to date. And actually, when the Corsa C came out in 2000. It um, looked sort of like this. It wasn't too much of a departure from the styling language. Of course, um, variants on this platform continued until the mid 2010s in some parts of the world. And uh, I think there's a real fondness to these, although second hand values don't quite reflect that yet. And this is a really nice high spec one, I think. So you can get a five door as well. Um, the one I took lessons in in about 2000, 2001. Um, was a five door. It also had this um, steering wheel. It was the uh, 1.4 SI engine, which was the higher powered of the two 1.4s in the early course of these. So, um, got the classic bits in here. One thing we won't be seeing is the um, mirror switch because we haven't got power mirrors, we haven't got power windows. Um, so we won't be seeing those bits, but we will be seeing the indicated wiper stalks, which had with things like Lotus Elise, and uh, this switch here, which I think is straight out of the Mark III Cavalier. Rev counter, which is dead fancy, the wide took lessons in, didn't have a rev counter. Classic Vauxhall style, things like rated window, you pull with this, and if you want the interior light, you pull this one. Absolutely sort of typical of the time. Be nice to have some air conditioning, but never mind, we've got a, a manual sunroof. And not really much else to say. We've not got 
the airbag in this one because it's a lower spec car. Um, we have though got the um, stereo display up there. The really early merits didn't get anything like that. Got some quite big door bins in here actually. The door's very long, so if you're, you know, someone with mobility issues and you need a car to get around in, like this little thing with the automatic gearbox and um, the incredibly wide doors might be quite a good option. Is that damped in any way? Uh, no, it's not. So we've got um, automatic gear. It's actually got snow and sport mode, which is good. Normal handbrake. These kind of slightly odd seatbelt buckles are always found in boxes of the time. And not really a lot else. Um, we'll have a look at the, the um, supervision documents in a bit and see if they fit in the glove box. But uh, a little uh, tray at the bottom of there as well. Mr Richardson will be very pleased to see some t shelf action, if you're familiar with the Furious Driving Channel. I think though, before we look in that glove box, let's get in the back. One of the things I quite like about this car is that the um, seat belt's on this kind of rail at the bottom there, so if you just put it over there you don't trip over it when you're trying to get in the back. And it's pretty good actually, it's not too bad, it's not as bad as some of the cars that Mr Manning from the Matty's Cars channel makes me get in the back of with my little three doors. Um, headroom is, it's alright, I mean I'm just touching the roof, but legroom's actually okay, this is my driving position, and I'm sort of average height really, and that's fine, if I just move myself into a different position, yeah it's alright, the biggest problem is the headroom, I think you've got more headroom in a five door than a, than a three door, but from that there's nothing really to say in the back, there's no rear had restraints. Um, I don't think we've got an ashtray or anything in here. No, nothing whatsoever. Um, windows are nice and big though. Actually for a car like this, if you compare this to cars that were around when this came out in 1993, things like a Metro or a Mark III Fiesta were very big sellers and this is a lot more spacious than those and feels much more modern. So yeah, it's funny that you know they do command something of a, a sort of premium now, whereas stuff like this doesn't doesn't really. Um, it's funny because they were they were pretty popular. Right. Okay. Well, look at me secret mission documents in a second, and then we'll have a look at the engine. Okay, it is a bit bright today, viewers. So apologies for the uh, unwanted amount of sunlight. Okay. Ooh, we've got lots of seats in here. There's lots of service history in this car. Spike with low mileage. Oh. Can I get my stuff underneath these service receipts? Oh, that's the problem. It's full of tapes. I mean, I approve of that, viewers. Um, <laughs> we've got there's these tapes in here, so um, that's why we can't get my secret mission documents in. So we'll leave those tapes and just leave that there. I think that'll be okay. Uh, right, well, let's have a look at the uh, the engine, shall we? So Mr Young and I were just commenting, you can just tell straight away but by looking at the top of the engine, it, it's, it's a family one. Um, just look at this very distinctive shaped um, cylinder head on here. So these can blow head gaskets, it's quite common in, for example, the Astra Fs, which are a sort of similar age to this now. It's not the biggest job in the world to do a cylinder head gasket on these. Also timing belt, it's just there. And um, this is to have a belt done about, I don't know, seven years ago. It should be okay for a bit longer. Especially just the mileage is so low on this. Typical kind of General Motors coolant reservoir as well. Looks pretty easy to work on it, actually. It doesn't look too bad. Um, 1.6 is, again, Family 1 engines. 1.2s are Family 1s. It's only the sort of later 1 litres of the 1.2s, um, Family 0. So apart from the cam belt, some head gasket failure, um, potentially on these, but not inevitable really. Uh, just watch the rust. I mean, we've got a little bit there. Um, it's not that bad really. And um, obviously a bit here where it's had an impact. But apart from that, it's it's not bad this. It, to do with a little bit of a clean, I suppose, but weather has been pretty bad around here recently, so I understand that. Face it to front end, I, I think it looks better than original. Some of you might disagree with that. No fog lamps or anything. Just a nice little pleasant car, you know. Probably a sort of modern, classic daily car, which is what Mr Young's using it for at the moment. I think this is a, a very sensible choice indeed. 
Right, let's go for a drive, shall we? So this is taking me back, viewers. The steering wheel is really similar to the one that was in the 1994 Corsa, but I took some lessons in it about 2001. The car came out in 1993. The basic engine was a 1.2 with 45 horsepower, and I have driven one of those, and it, it is slow. It's really slow. Fifth gear in that, you don't get maximum top speed at all. It's just it's your cruising gear. The uh, 1.4, like 1.2, a family one unit. I would generate 60 horsepower or 82 horsepower. After 1994, as far as I understand it, 1.4 was replaced with um, an engine of the same capacity but with more power. This says like sort of 90 odd horsepower apparently this, which it does feel it, but the front cable is really sticky, sticky so it doesn't necessarily feel that fast all the time. The GSI, which was a very sort of short-lived version of the Corsa B, it only lasted, I think, from like 93 to about late 94, early 95. It had a 1.6 engine with um, 110 horsepower. Later on, the um, basic 1.2 engine was replaced with a one-litre, three-cylinder engine um, with a facelift in 97. This is in 98, so it's um, just after the facelift. Um, of uh, 55 horsepower. Then there was a 1.2 four cylinder family zero engine, which developed, um, some people say it's 65 horsepower, some people say it's, it's different, I don't quite now understand that. Then later on the Corsa Sport, I think it was, uh, there was some 1.6 um, Corsa Sports, developed um, 105 horsepower from a 16 valve engine. I think the main difference between this one and the earlier um, 1682 horsepower versions. Bizarrely, the 82 was badged as an SI regardless of the trim level, so the um, 1.2 Corsa I took lessons in that was badged as an SI GLS, which is odd. But the uh, 1.4 with 60 horsepower badged the high torque. There are also some diesels available, but as usual, due to controversial government legislation and all kinds of other reasons. Uh, we don't talk about diesels on this channel. So being an automatic, this one, um, most of the others were five-speed manuals, although some of the very early merits were four-speed manual. It's, it's a very relaxing car to drive. There's really no sort of bother in this whatsoever. You kind of just sort of amble along as this car probably has done for most of its life. Bear in mind it's only on 36,000 miles which is insane. The automatic gearbox apparently needs a service, but because we're doing such low speeds, that's probably what this car's done most of the time. It doesn't matter too much. So, uh, grasping this, like, non-airbag steering wheel and, um, you know, sitting in this position, we're looking at the <laughs> instruments and things, it makes me feel incredibly nostalgic because not only did I take lessons in the course of B, everybody took lessons in the course of B. They were the main cars we used by British School of Motoring back in the 90s and uh, 2000s. So it's pretty crazy, kind of, that these were so common once and now, well, they're getting fit on the ground. The thing is, is that this car cost under a thousand pounds and I think the majority of them probably still would. It's nothing really to write home about in terms of driving experience. I mean, driven another one of these a little bit further and faster. It, it's never been the most dynamic car. They were, they were based on a very similar platform to the Nova, so not radically different, but um, it's comfortable enough Considering how old this car is, the suspension's actually all right. But uh, yeah, it's never, it's never going to win any sort of um, races in this. I mean, you might, you might in a GSI, but the problem with that was the insurance was so expensive on them. Bear in mind, other courses driven by younger people that they had to discontinue it because uh, for people couldn't afford the premiums. Not like today. Is it straight on here or is it left? Uh, it's left. 
kind of roughly where we are now. So yeah, this it brings this brings back an awful lot of memories for for me and a lot of you because they were just sort of there and they were easy. There were tons of RAM spares were really cheap. Actually, spares aren't too bad on these, really. And um, obviously, because this car was bought less than two months ago for under a thousand pounds, clearly you stand still can't pick one of these up for that sum. Um, I actually really sort of enjoy this. I like I like Corsa V's actually. I'd have to have a CDX myself with um, a nice leather interior. Um, I'd also probably want a manual. This this automatic, I think it's a four-speed auto, this one. It, it, it's absolutely fine. It's just, um, you know, the manual gearbox, although it's a bit clunky, just it gives a little bit more sort of precision when you're driving. Um, but yeah, this is fine. It's, 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 I can't believe how I can't believe how cheap this was and how good a condition it's in. And um, that's really what nostalgic no budget reviews are all about. And there's my air freshener and competence again. Let's now look at uh, the enormous number of Corsa B trim levels of the sort of seven and a half years they marketed these cars over here. So we had the Merit, the Merit E-Drive, drove one of those in 2022, uh, the Sting, the Trip, the In Envoy, the Club, the LS, the GLS, the SRI, the SXI, the Sport, the GSI, the CDX, the Expression, the Breeze, the Corsa.com, which was strange. It means you could actually order one of these online, like the Vectras, the Astros, I think. The Vegas, the Premier, one of those was in one foot grave, actually, a Corsa Premier. Uh, the Swing, the Twist, the Capital. I've never seen one of these before, actually, the Capital trim level. The Arizona and the Spin. Around the world, um, there were vast numbers of names for this car in the various forms. You could get, actually, an estate version of this in some places, like Italy. You could get a saloon version of this. We only got a 3 to 5 wheel hatchback because Vauxhall thought those are the ones that probably sell the best. So actually right I have thought but we have the Chevy Chevy yeah Chevrolet Chevy uh, the Buick Sail the Holden Barina um, the Opel Vita in Japan which is strange to think you know we sold these in Japan um, the Chevrolet Corsa um, and it was built in all sorts of places mainly sort of Spain and Germany for our market and other places in Europe but as well in India Thailand Colombia Mexico Argentina and Brazil till 2016, um, Venezuela, Egypt, South Africa, China and Ecuador. So viewers, um, as a sort of modern classic daily car for under a thousand pounds, should you be spending a hard-earned budget on one of these? I don't see why not. I mean, I, I sort of prefer this one to the Merit E-Drive for during 2022 because it's got power steering and a much more powerful engine. Um, in fact, like double the horsepower in this car. Um, I still would like to go a little bit further and get a CDX myself or some nice leather trim, but that's just me. You, there are problems with these cars, um, you know, suspension issues. Sometimes the electronics can go bad, but it's a really old car, obviously rust and then cam belts, head gaskets. But to be honest, like they were very, very cheap to run when they were new, apart from a GSI, um, and they still are. So an ideal car really if, if if you are a young driver and you want a first sort of almost a classic now although classic given the old the, the first one you're over 30 years old now maybe that qualifies for it i don't know ask your insurer anyway thank you very much indeed once again for watching thank you mr young for once again providing a car for review Hope there's another one coming soon. Um, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like this video, leave a comment below, and we shall see you again soon for some more inexpensive motoring.